uh, I guess, found out about the, the Beacon solution back in January after we had just just completed a, a mass meter change out of the little town of China Grove. And some of you may have come by on I-85 this morning. Uh, we're just up the road about 30 minutes. And, um, we assumed the ownership and operation of, of the town's um, water and sewer uh, about three years ago and inherited um, 1,700, 1,800 meters. And the town had, over the years, incorporated multiple AMR uh, solutions. Uh, so they had they had three different technologies, plus they did some manual reads. And the majority of their manual reads were from, from the other systems that were failing over time. So we inherited this system with, um, with different systems that were starting to fail, uh, weren't compatible. Uh, we had both read technology and software that was no longer supported or, or hard to get support from, from. And we had also been looking at, at you know, getting into the AMR world ourselves. We have a little over 22,000 meters that uh, we were manually reading on a monthly basis. Um, so looking at, at Town of China Grove and then look, trying to find a solution of what we wanted to do, uh, we pulled the trigger on changing those out, those out to uh, the Orion ME transmitters. Um, did that in a, a short amount of time, but we were facing a couple of different hurdles there. One of them was the, the no rate requirements that, that came into effect earlier this calendar year. So um, we changed out those and, and, and farmed that out and had a contractor come in and 22 working days changed out about 1775, I think is what it actually ended up being. And one of the things we actually did, um, and, and we put, and we'll talk about those later, we put the, the A25s in. Uh, the only ones we changed were our, our five X recorders, you know, most of the rest of the years there. Um, the, the center that, that's been used in China Grove also had a, a, a check valve on it that we decided to let the technology, you know, the, the meter itself, do that work for us. Rather than taking all those check valves out and you know, testing those to see if those were going to be good or, or fail or whatever. Because um, we couldn't do that after the first year because they had lead in them. We take them out of the meter box. You know, check it, can't put them back. So we said, well, you know, reverse flow technology, we're going to let that meter, you know, do that work for us. So that's what we did, and we've had real good success with that. So we uh, we got our starter kit on the, the Beacon Sailor uh, starter kit earlier this year. Again, we, we looked and, and really uh, tried to identify what customers, uh, accounts we wanted to put those on. Again, looked at that cross-section. Uh, we've got... Um, one of them is actually on a, a bulk water meter on another town that we, we operate for them. Um, we did a, a retrofit on an existing uh, six inch, eight inch, eight inch uh, net tube meter there. And then we've got the Dale Winter School we mentioned earlier, and we've got some residential accounts. Um, and a couple of those have actually set up our water accounts in there and are, are playing around with that some uh, at this point. Um, again, we targeted those end users. Um, we, you know, we've got plans to, at some point, you know, really try to migrate away from our, our uh, manual read system, um, but that hadn't, that hadn't been funded yet. Um, doesn't make the budget cut, so, so we're not there yet. And what I really like about the, the cellular solution is it allows that shotgun deployment. Um, Jeff and I were trying to find the words yesterday to type in the slide what it was, and, and, and Maurice hit it was scalable. That's the word we were looking for, Maurice. And, and it's... It really gives you a lot of flexibility in what you're going to do. Um, so if you know, talking with the school system, they've got a they've got a guy on their side who really monitors their their water usage. Um, we put the one on at the elementary school, and right away we knew they had a leak. He knew he had more usage there than you know per student at all his other schools. But he didn't know why. He didn't know what was going on. As soon as we did that, uh, we we notified him he had a 30 gallon an hour leak. I believe it was. Um, we actually went out there and helped them find a leak under a slab in, in, one, in one of the oldest parts of the school. Um, you know, they, they got that corrected. You know, we saw that. We'll show that here in just a minute. Um, they've had another leak crop up since then. Um, when we rode through on our drive-by solution in China Grove the first time, um, 64 leaks out of those 1,700 plus, you know, hit us with a, with a leak alert. Um, we were able to proactively go back and tell those folks, hey, you need to check. You know, you're going to get a big bill. Um, and some of those just going knocking on their door and, and talking to those. They were appreciative of that, um, but at the same time, it was softer for us to, to go knock on their door for them, for them to come walk in our customer service center with a high bill 
and the only information we would have is the same thing they've got on the field, which is the read. One of the, the challenges we have had and, and you know, is just compatibility. Sometimes we're working with this new, you know, with the, the Neptune master meter and, and getting the, the retrofit right and, and um, you know, just, just making that work. The two, the two different brands talk to each other. We've got those worked out and it seems to be doing pretty good. But I think one of the things we'd like to do now is just kind of log into our, our Beacon account and, um, and show some things. Right, Jason, just one more thing. For instance, with this map, those green dots, that's where we have Beacon endpoint or the cellular endpoints deployed. And you can see they're scattered all over the place. Um, with Salisbury Rowing Utilities, we've actually got three other towns that's outside of this map that we serve. And you know, one of the things we're looking at with a, a changeover is how do we go about doing that, that you know, if you've got two or three meters that are 10 miles from your city limits, how in the world are you going to get those? And again, we've, we've been able to do that with that cellular endpoint. If you look in the very top right, left-hand corner of the map up there, we've got one, that's a, that's a house. That, uh, that we've got them way out there. So now we don't have to drive to that house um, to uh, pick that up. So yeah, that's, that's some of the, the pluses that we've seen from the, uh, from the cellular technology. And my at a glance looks just a little bit different. Um, I've got, you know, it's a different order. It's all the same stuff on there. Um, and so, you know, it's customizable with that. But again, with the flow health on here, we're showing 15 leagues out of, out of 196 uh, meters on there. But a couple to, to, to bring up is uh, Hurley Elementary School. That's the uh, elementary school that we had. So for instance, they've got a very normal weekday pattern. Um, <coughs> and you, know, you can tell when school started. And you know, there was a little bit of usage before school started uh, through the summer. <coughs> but when you go back to the end of last year, so um, you know, this was put out on May the 22nd. You notice right here, this is a Sunday. 870 gallons used by that school on a Sunday. Um, this is Memorial Day <coughs> on the 26th. 830 gallons. You know, what we look at is if we drill into that. This is 34 gallons an hour going through that meter. Um, and so you know, again, that, that's, that's 800 gallons a day that that school is using, or actually that's going through their meter that they're not using. Um, and I'm, I'm, that came to about $200 a month in, uh, in extra water bills that they had. And so you know, we tracked it down, and then you can see out here toward the end of June, they, uh, you know, it, 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 it got, we found it, it got fixed, and so they're, uh, they're just straight off with that. So um, one thing we found is when we contact customers and are able to quantify that leak for them, say, look, you know, this leak is costing you $50 a month. They used to get fixed in a couple of days. One other thing right quick is, um, Maurice, we mentioned that, you know, by, by giving this information to customers, you know, they may be more conservative or, you know, utilizing less water, which, you know, that's our, that's our, our revenue stream, you know, this is our cash register. Um, but the other piece of that is, you know, right now we're giving credits on leaks that we don't know what the quantity is. This allows us to quantify what somebody's, what, what their leak is. We can, you know, just like Jeff just showed, their baseline is 30 gallons an hour. Well, if we let them know 
you know, when we come in on Monday morning, well, you've had a leak all weekend, you need to get that fixed. If they choose to ignore that for, for you know, weeks or months or multiple billing periods, we can go back and quantify that and say, you know, you really not owe this money because we made you aware of it. Or if you know, it's been leaking for a week or so, we can see what the baseline usage is and quantify that leak. Whereas now we're basically just writing it off without a clue of how much that is. Um, another meter that uh, I want to show you is uh, this is one of our wastewater treatment plants. Um, we had actually just uh, just installed um, installed this in for. Uh, this is actually working through a, a master meter meter. So this is one of those where we're actually able to receive the uh, high resolution data um, from a master meter um, um, encoder to uh, to one of the cell phone endpoints. And so you see we installed it on August 27th. And you know, one of the things that happens with, uh, with, the, uh, um, with the interface is it automatically scales. And so you know, we're looking here where the scale is 50,000 gallons um, per day is the top on this. And you know, we're running 25, 30,000 gallons a day. All of a sudden, it jumps to scale to one million gallons a day, and so that's what these big bars are right here. Um, came into work on Monday, the uh, the eighth, and half my screen on my um, at a glance was red. That uh, the system usage was way up, and, and all kinds of stuff like that. And so I started hunting, and uh, in this account, um, we had run two and a quarter million gallons extra through that meter over the weekend. Um, that is a six inch surface into the sewer plant and it broke. It was running 500 gallons a minute um, out. So um, anyway, to show you what that leak looks like is, you know, one o'clock in the morning, the base flow for that plant is about a thousand gallons an hour. So. We were, we were normal there, and then all of a sudden it starts jumping up, and then here's where it you know, fully came apart. It was running 34,000 gallons an hour you know, by, the, uh, by the time it was running, running full blast. And so it was 800,000 gallons a day um, going through there. Then you can see, you know, came in Monday morning, yeah, I looked at this, um, and it, what's funny is right at the same time that uh, my maintenance guys were coming in to our office to talk to our director, you know, I'm, I'm walking down the hallway and I'm like, have you heard anything from the plant? Because they've got a bad leak. And, you know, they, they realized the same thing because they had low water pressure. So, you know, that put us on to, to uh, looking for this. We found it pretty quickly. You can see they had it shut down for a little while repairing that pipe and then, you know, back up and, and run it. But that this is what some of those leaks look like in uh, in the system. And then we were also able to see this same quantity on the, the master meter at, at the town that, that serves this, this sewer plant. Yeah, because you know one of the things that I was looking at is is it a malfunction of the meter? And um, it's kind of an unusual situation. Our wastewater treatment plant is actually located in the town of East Spencer. So we sell the town water and then they sell it back to us for the sewer plant. And so, you know, that's the first thing I did was compare their master meter. It didn't have the same data that I was seeing here and, and it matched up. Yeah, exactly. And then the flip side, we've got a large leak here. We actually have a customer who has a, a very small leak that you know, had flagged it the first, you know, the first week we had it on there. And it's still there, but we've, we, I think we've converted this one over to a continuous flow so we don't keep getting leaks left on it. We actually made your customer aware of this, um, and, and they have chose not to mess with it just because it's so small. What they're paying a month in the, in the leak was a lot less than what they'd have to pay a plumber to fix it. And I, I, they think they have an idea of what it is, but it's not a big deal. But it's a uh, half gallon an hour. And, So yeah, you see right here. 
right here, just very, very small amounts right here. So, you, know, you, you think about how, what the flow rate is through that meter um, you know, at a half a gallon an hour. Um, and you know, again, we, we've gone completely with the E-series meters um, you know, for that, uh, that registration accuracy. It gets, it gets down pretty small. That's the only other thing I'll say is on, on the home screen there, you've got your top 25. We first deployed our um, our starter kit, obviously we only had 10 on there, and, and two or three of those were people who actually work in our department. Um, had a running judge to see who was going to be on top of the top 25. You know, somebody, uh, somebody irrigated and they, they jumped above, and then the other ones had a had a daughter who came home from college for the weekend and you know, took 30 minute showers and they leapfrogged back and forth. Just a running joke on Monday morning to see who was, who was winning, winning or losing that top 25. So now we've got a bunch more in there, so they kind of fell by the way. So, so um, yeah, we'll be happy to answer any questions. on that and currently we're only getting six digits right. from that e-coder so we're getting the reads and but it's only to the thousand gallon resolution on that and that is one it's it's a tra custody transfer meter um, the town is purchasing that water from us and so they want um, you know more accurate and so we're, we're still working on that um, one, one of the things there they have they have a high non revenue water amount, and they're they're trying to track that down. So when we're looking at their their nighttime flows, you know, is it two thousand gallons an hour or is it three thousand gallons an hour? Well, it's, it's somewhere in between there. You know, is it is it twenty nine hundred or twenty one hundred? That's a that's a big difference. You know, at that point, and you know, we've um, rural waters helped them on some leak detection. Uh, we're working there trying to get that down, and you know, we're finding some leaks and repairing some leaks on their behalf, but. Is it making a difference? It's kind of hard to tell when you've got such a big step. Yeah. And this is that account again. You can see this is the leak from the wastewater plant. It showed up on their meter as well. Um, but you know, when you look look at their, um, you know, this is their hourly usage, and again, our resolution is a thousand gallons. So that we we know they get down to two thousand gallons an hour, but you know, you just incrementally, how much smaller? Um, and, and I think that one of the things that could probably help us with this is implement the 15 minute um, resolution uh, on this. So intrigued about, uh, about getting that deployed on this one. Yes, uh, back to one of your earlier slides when you were talking about the install, uh, you said 22 days uh, you guys installed 1,700 or 1,770 or something like that. Do you happen to know how many uh, employees the contractor had actually installed? I mean, was that two people, five people? It, they, they, well, yeah, they put a, they put some extra folks on there, because we had that, that hard deadline at the end of the calendar year, and, right. uh, and obviously Christmas was in there too. And Thanksgiving, and yeah, it wasn't <laughs> just two or three people, then. Yeah, no, it was, uh, I think they had a crew of four to start, and then, um, and then I think they brought a couple more in. I can go back and look yeah, and get I that for you. I think but, they got hey, they at one point they had as many as seven. Yeah. I think. But yeah, they right. they, they did a really good job. Yeah, they did a super job on that. Matt, you got a question? This this may not be for you all as much as it might be for the Carolina staff, but can you speak to the the efficiency of what we there's six D nine D availability than E series. Can you speak about the how granular you need to get for that leak detection because you may have like us legacy 60 in the system and I know you're, you're we're billing currently thousand gallons so there's going to be a price point there's going to be all those things that you see that stuff going away and, and this can overlay into the legacy system I see the benefit to it can you speak to that a little bit on the availabilities of those three quarter inches um, I'm sorry man I was talking with with, with Greg did you did you hear the question Maurice there's, we have been discussing six-digit and nine-digit display. What if you have legacy meters 
But we just did a rollout and, and we had to make a decision prior to this technology. So we just bought all new six digit. So can you speak to when this overlays to what you may have in your legacy system and then you go to implement new, how granular are we going to be able to get? Because that, would you say, half a gallon, mm -hmm. you know, per hour, where are we going to be able to see? In your case, with a six dial resolution, it's, it's there is 10 gallons. Okay? Um, and then obviously we, we talked about the high res encoder. Uh, in, in, in that case, and, and, and they will work in conjunction with what you've got. That's not, that wouldn't be a problem, man. I know we, we, we have some challenges there relative to So I bring that up for the sake of the group, so that when you're at that yes. point of decision making, when you see real life testimonials and experiences like this, when 90% of our business is going to be on an M25 three quarter inch service, for example, or whatever the case may be, we are trying to make those logical decisions that, to benefit that end consumer. It's not as much about the utility. We can, we're going to catch that 10 or we're going to catch the whatever. The whole point is catching it in 24 hours versus 30 days, but when you're looking at that, how granular you need to be, I think that was something Very that we may have missed. May have missed it, and so I just want to share that with you. You know, we're going we're to speak to that a little later. Craig is going to do a presentation to talk about the different color options that we have, and really that is the main point, is to say, because someone, many customers will ask me that, well, why do I need that granularity? To these examples, yeah. those that's where that granularity helps you. Even if the customers, an example of a half gallon, like you said, a half gallon for for all, you know what? It's still you're still able to tell that customer that they've got that problem versus it being at that ten gallon or, or higher. So we'll, we'll discuss that this afternoon. That's a good question. Thank you, Matt. I got a question. Yeah. Will this be accessible through like a uh, cell phone? Or is that only on laptop? No, it is. Yeah, I mean, the smart well, it, yeah, it's, it's two sides of the house. I mean, Marty's talking about the island water, but this is, you know, he looked at this too. This is our this is our data right now, what's, <coughs> what's going on in our system. Mm -hmm. And we actually had another case of, that was a restaurant in town that we upgraded their meter and um, and, and put a cellular endpoint on there, and it, it gave us a leak flag, you know, right away. When talking with our meter techs, when they changed the meter, they had movement on the meter and even. Um, so we call the call the customer, and uh, I, I met him out there, and I said, "Yeah, you got a leak on this." And I said, "This the other thing is, this is your flow rate. This is how much you know, I'm looking at the meter. I'm showing him right there in the pit. So this is what you're, this is how much you're losing." And they had expanded the restaurant over the years and just put a new line in. And they were able to go do some valves, and we isolated that, and they were able to fix that. And he says, "He says it's just odd that this meter happened after y'all, this leak happened after y'all changed my meter. Said, this leak's been going on." <laughs> <laughs> You're just aware of it now. We pull that to you. You know, we talk to him. He said, "It's just crazy after y'all changed that meter out. I got this leak." I said, "No, you didn't." And I, I log in on my smartphone and I said, "All right, here it is right now. This, you know, we put it in here. Here's your usage. You know, what time do you close those up?" So I said, "Well, here's where your water usage goes down. This is what your leak is." I said, "Is that same flow rate?" I just showed you on the meter. He was convinced, then, and he was very appreciative. But yeah, the, uh, the browser on your smartphone. Just log in. It's, yeah, it's smaller screen, yeah. but um, but yeah, it, it you know we we uh, we've been able to access it in the field as well. Thank you, guys. Really? One quick tip for the team: I, you, people had talked about uh, whether or not you have funding for the the project. Uh, we put a beta test smart meter, and Mark helped us at a coin operated laundry owned by a commissioner who guaranteed he did not have a leak. We had a showed consumption on a Sunday to a Monday. He has been our number one advocate for leak control, uh, and we we ultimately got funded. So you got to be smart on your shotgun deployment. <laughs> <laughs> well, our mayor is actually We found a leak at his house. We yeah. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you all. Thank you. And uh, I gave this presentation, I guess, about three years ago at the uh, American or the North Carolina Spring Conference for uh, the Waterworks Association. And like I prefaced there, I think there are three things that really people get really good out of shape about. One is politics, one is religion, the other is meters. <laughs> so, so please bear with me. Um, the study that we did is not really not very generous to uh, a certain meter technology and 
I've got some feedback from people that are really bought into that. Nothing personal about this. This is just what we found in Salisbury. Again, this, again, three years old. We're up to about 22,000 meters now. 85% of those are residential. And um, yeah, again, that's the five eighths by three quarter meters. Of that, of those, um, yeah, 85 percent, five eighths by three quarters. The volume usage out of those is about 42 percent. Um, you come on down and look at our industrial industrial users, which again is about one percent of our majors. That's 16 percent of our volume goes through there, and so that just kind of gives a gives an idea. We do have a power plant that purchases water from us they run is really good. Um, that's about 2 million gallons a day. So uh, we like for them to uh, use water. And it doesn't come back to our sewer plant, which is even better. Um, so what we did was we focused on our 5 eighths by 3 quarter meters. And um, got our meter techs together and we put together a test of 800 meters. So that we, did a, uh, um, we did a large sample. What we did was we used um, tests that they had done since 2008. So at the time, these were um, these were about three or four years old. Was how far back we went, and so that we pulled a lot of records, so we didn't have to test a full 800 meters. And then we did a random sample of um, meters, uh, five to ten percent out of each year prior to that. And then to get an overall accuracy, we used the meter factor of you know the quarter gallon minute test. That accounted for about 12% of what we expected to go through that residential meter. One to two gallons per minute was 86%, and then 2% um, was at the high flow of 15 gallons per minute. We came up with this: accurate to 25 years, which goes against everything that Maurice just said. <laughs> So we're like, okay, what's the deal? I mean, it's just a meter, right? Well, what we found, there's no point. Right here, you know, this is this is age starting at year one, and those 150-year-old uh, mechanical meters, or you know, mechanical meters that have been around for 150 years, I found some that were over 40, over 45 years old uh, in the system. I had, uh, there were some Rockwell meters in from 1968. Well, one of the things that we found is in the 80s and 90s, we put in a lot of multi-jet meters. And this is kind of where it gets a little controversial, that when they go in, those are great meters. But we found out something happens to those meters. It's a little different when, uh, when they age that for our displacement meters, you had your standard curve, your low flow drop way off, and then the medium and high flow, it, you know, it, it didn't drop off as steeply, but you still lost water through the displacement meters. The multi jets, you had the low flow drop off, but we found that they actually increased on the medium and high. Um, we didn't really look into why that might happen, but out of our test, that's, that's what we found. And so when you look at that, this is that period of time with the multi-jets, right here. So that's what was artificially sustaining that revenue from that age of meters. And so then, you know, we're, we got looking at, okay, we still have to change those meters out. Um, you know, it's we, you know, through our regular program. And so as we change those meters that are over registering out, you know, it, our, our revenue <coughs> gap gets bigger and bigger. Um, and, and so that's where we were looking at, okay, what, what do we do? Through this with a uh, mechanical meter, we came to the conclusion, I think just about everybody else has, about 14 years the revenue loss from those mechanical meters, you know, it becomes unsustainable. That you're losing more than it costs to replace that meter. And so we got with the uh, the guys at the Environmental Finance Center at Chapel Hill, and um, had them do a little report for us on, you know, what is what is the uh, um, 
I guess, what is the business case for going with, uh, uh, what did you say, Maurice, the uh, um, static meter versus the mechanical meter? You know, that with the cost and everything else, because you know, I'm an engineer, not an economist. And so we got them to, uh, to go in and, and look at our situation, which, which is better for us. And you know, one of the economic solutions they came to with that is that the, uh, the static meter um, you know, over the long term was better with that maintained accuracy um, than, uh, than you know, having a 20 year change out for battery life on those versus the 14 year on a, uh, on a mechanical meter. And the, some of the other things we looked at with this change out is you know, for hand reading meters, if you've got cubic feet, or actually 100 cubic feet, you don't have to write down as many digits. And so, you know, that, I think that's the reason a lot of people do that. But that's hard for the customer to understand. And so with us going with new technology, we're going back to gallons so that it's something that, you know, that we can talk the same language with the customer instead of having to explain to them what a billing unit is because they think that that's a made up number. Um, and uh, I think that's fine. Jason, you got anything you want to add? I mean, we just um, kind of to build on what Maurice was saying, comparing the M25s and the E25s, we're actually in, I think, about year three, I think it is, Craig, on a, a project with Utah State. <coughs> comparing those two, we've got 10 each of those in a, a fairly new development in, our, in, in the city where they're in series. So the, the water goes through both of those meters, and so we're we're comparing the data on those. And so far, we're in the we're on the the front side of that curve. So so those are, are pretty much in line and, and, and very comparable on both those both those two on. But yeah, with that Utah State study, we're looking at again with with the water going through one meter and then through the other, and you know, they're measuring exactly the same amount of water. What uh, what happens? You know, over time with that mechanical meter, you know, how, how, how quickly does it does it drop off? And we and the customers that are in there um, are you know we've got a cross section. Even though it's five houses on one side of the street and five houses on the other side of the street, um, we've got one vacant house that's in there right now. We've got some that are using about 200 gallons a week. We got some that are using 1,500 gallons a week. So it, it kind of gives us a cross section again of those residential customers. With that. Um, and I guess one other reason that we really um, decided on the E Series meter, and, and uh, Maurice did not mention this, but uh, with the tamper alarm, with the E Series, you do get a dry pipe warning. You get a dry pipe error. So that, you know, with a mechanical meter, if the customer takes the meter out of the setter, you don't ever know that as long as they get it back in before the meter reader comes back up. Well, with the, you know, they can straight pipe, you know, whatever. With the E-series meter, because the, the, the speed of sound is going to change, whether it's in water or it's in air, it gives you that dry pipe error, so you know when somebody takes that meter out of that setter. So again, you know, that, was, that was one of the big things that, uh, that, um, you know, that, that did it for us, you know, all other things being equal. Yes, sir. You have another great point, Jeff. Kind of dovetail off what you're saying that with the static meter, it's all one big piece. So a person can't really tamper with it. You know, where the mechanical meter, I'm sure you guys have got great stories about how customers want to tamper with a meter. Because it's one big piece, one piece of electronics is not removable, the customer really can't tamper with it. They can't do anything to, to uh, I guess, besides taking a hammer to it, they can't really do anything. Anybody have any questions for me? Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff.